Hello and welcome to The Witch Source. I'm Whitney and I am here with Sister Courtney. Hello. And the beautiful Phoenix Rose. Hello. And we are continuing on and this will be uh, the last of our Claire Senses series. So we're going to be talking about Claire Sentience, Claire Tangency, and an extra special part of Claire Tangency, Psychometry. So this should be fun. You guys we'll learn something new. All right. So uh, I guess we'll just jump right in with the definitions because you guys know I like to do that if you have listened for a while now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I have no idea what these are. <laughs> Clairsentience is a specific psychic ability to feel, know, and receive information through the physical body, such as gut instincts being internal or goosebumps being external. So this is when you actually are registering on your actual body a feeling. Um, and it is a, again, psychic ability. And what happens is this particular Claire and why it's probably not as known and as popular is because it actually blends with some of the other Claire's. So, you know, you'll get like the gut feeling, that gut instinct, um, but then normally behind it, you'll get like the clear cognizance will come in of knowing what to do with that, that physical reaction within your body. Um, or like if you get the hairs on your arm, stand up the goosebumps because you're registering some kind of, you're picking up some kind of energy, psychic information. Um, and then typically, hopefully Again, the clear cognizance piece is kicking in to give you additional information. It also works well with the clear empathy, which we talked about um, on the last episode, so that you maybe get feelings associated with the, the physical as well. So, but it goes so, a little bit deeper into the physical reaction than just the clear empathy. So, is that like, um, say you meet someone and you just feel like your skin is crawling? Like, ugh. Yes, exactly. Like if somebody just gives you like, yeah, you get, you get a physical reaction. Yes. That would be, that's what Claire's sentience is. Like you feel it in your body, like they just kind of make you feel sick or, you know, but yeah, that's the perfect example, actually. Awesome. Felt that. <laughs> but a lot, I think a lot of people have this ability, you know, they get those kind of reactions in different places or around certain people. They just don't realize that it is actually a, a psychic ability. And that is clairsentience. So, and then the, um, the other one, clairtangency. So the definition of clairtangency, the psychic ability to feel being touched by energy or beings with a physical response such as heat or cold, pressure or sensation. So this would be like if you ever felt yourself being touched or when you walk into an area and you feel the temperature shift. Okay. So, so that makes sense. But different from like the ghost hunters are like, oh, did you just feel the temperature drop? Or is that actually or, no, not the same, thing? the same thing? Oh, the same thing. Oh, That's right. your your reaction to the energy. Yeah. So, like, or, have any of you ever had that experience of feeling like something's touched you? Oh yeah, that's happened to me a few times. You want to share more? Well, I mean, there was once I felt like I was touched on the side. Um, I don't know, stuff like that. <laughs> it's happened a few times. So I went to um, my mom's the other day and I was just standing in the kitchen and I felt a cat rub up against my leg. But she has no cats in the house. But I mean, it was straight, just like, you know, a cat will walk up and rub its head and then its body and it'll like lean on you and rub against you. So I felt that, but that would be the, the clear tangency. So, and I was like, you have a cat in here. And she was like, no, I don't. And I was like, oh, but you do. <laughs> oh, but you do. You may not know it, but you do. Makes me wonder which cat it was. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. 
um, if I had to guess, I would say it was um, Shadow. So she had a cat named um, Shadow that was her familiar. Oh. Which cat was it that I had? Shadow. Which, oh. no, you had one of Shadow's, no, I don't think you had Shadow. I think you had one of Shadow's babies. Oh. Yeah. No, I don't think that, that was not my fault. We don't talk about that. <laughs> no, we don't talk about that. Um, so another example would be, I know I've already talked about this, but um, like when I was clearing and staging that apartment that I lived in and my little sister was with me, um, we were actually using her as a monitor <laughs> for where this thing was moving because, you know, it took a lot of stage to get whatever that entity, that demon, which, you know, we ended up finding out that's what it was, um, out, but it kept moving throughout the house and so of the apartment and her hair on her arms would stand straight up if she, if it was near so we had to keep moving her from room to room to room as we were clearing to make sure that it was gone and then once we were done uh we had her walk through the entire place again just to make sure she didn't register <laughs> anything else make sure that thing was gone of course that's when we then went downtown to go get more sage because we ran out and I could feel it piggybacking. I could feel the pressure of its arms riding on my shoulders. So again, that would be the clear tangency of having it ride along. It was very disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Not something you want hanging around. So any other uh, thoughts, ideas? You guys have any experiences you can think of? Not right off hand. <laughs> okay. I have been right. touched yeah. a few times. <laughs> but that's about it. Yeah, I don't really think that that, you know, you don't think of it all that often. You know, and that's it, the thing. Just, it happens in the moment and you dismiss it or yeah. you question yourself. Right. Because you think there's nothing there. So it gets dismissed, but it, it is your your psyche sense, psychic senses at work. Um, I know one time I, I was pushed. I was actually getting into the shower and I felt myself get pushed in the back and I fell into the shower because um, I was pushed. Ouch. I was going through a nasty divorce at the time. I, I don't know if maybe there was some bad juju sent my way or something, but yeah, have to take care of that situation. Well, we took care of that really well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very, very well. Okay, so, center. <laughs> since we are a witchy magical podcast, I want to talk about, um, because there's really not a whole lot more to talk about as far as these go, I want to dive into the magical aspects of these particular um, clairs because they do get juicy. <laughs> <laughs> so clear sentience, which is that clear feeling, so those gut instincts and um, the goose reaction. Um, they can be used during ritual and magic to sense and feel the energy that you are raising. So a lot of times we do, you know, different little spells and charms. And a lot of times they're simple, they're quick, and you're not, you're raising and focusing your energy. But if you've ever done a full on ritual where you have called in um, the elements and the quarters and, you know, your deity of choice, you can feel that energy come in. And when you feel that energy come in, that is using that clear sentient ability. Um, and so developing this particular gift is really important because it helps you to be able to know what energies you're working with and interacting with, what energies you're calling on and being able to feel and sense that it's there you're getting results and then once you're able to feel and interact with this energy then you can begin to focus and direct the energy with your spell work so i know we talk about listening and trusting your intuition and your gut reactions and that is one way to start activating and engaging more with the clairsentient and getting in touch with the um 
that particular psychic ability and using, you know, those gut reactions, those, that hair standing up on your arms as a way to confirm what you're calling in. Um, right. When you're, you're calling in those, those quarters and the elements. Have you guys ever done any kind of a, I don't know if you guys have any examples that you want to share because I know when you do some really big ritual magic like that, it's often very private, but do you guys want to share? Have you ever had experiences where you've raised a lot of energy in that way and had that kind of a response? You Only when working with you. I mean, but I mean, a lot of times when we do work together, I mean, we're, we're calling in and we're, we're doing some major house cleaning, major stuff. Right. So. Because I know you're a lot of times you like you say, like, you're not into the energy piece, sister, like you you don't feel it. You don't respond to it that way. But do you feel like, you know, when we have done the big works together that you have felt that Claire sentient kick up? Uh, maybe not necessarily that, um, but you know, it's, it's like you just know something big just happened. It's just the knowing. Okay, the knowing. Rose, what about yeah. you? <laughs> Anything you want to share? Um, I asked to meet a spirit guide once. You know, went to bed that night and woke up the next day and got a name and I called it and asked if this who it was and to you know let me know what its presence felt like and I was definitely engulfed in what he felt like and it was very heavy very protective like I knew that there was something there with me yeah cool so I would love for you guys to keep that in mind and keep this particular clear in mind the next time you're working some spell work and some energy magic and doing your ritual and just pay attention, you know, and, and know that you are having that physical reaction. You are feeling that shift and that change and that raise in that energy. And that is you, part of your psychic ability. That's part of your magic. And that is the, the clear sentient piece. So clear tangency can also be used with ritual and magic because, well, okay, let me back up. Let's go ahead and bring in the psychometry piece of the Clary Tangency because that's the fun part, right? Bring it on. <laughs> okay, so an aspect of Clary Tangency is psychometry and that is the psychic ability to receive information through physically touching an object or person. Hmm. Thoughts, feels, shares on that. We know someone that could do that, mm -hmm. but can you? I've had it happen with some things, yes. Um, I can't say it was as strong as the person that we knew, but I definitely believe that all of these psychic senses, all of these clear senses can be utilized and strengthened when exercising and focused on, absolutely. Rose, do you have any thoughts on psychometry in general? Oh, it's very fun to play with if you're able to do it. It's a lot of fun to play with. We did that in the psychic intuitive group. So we did that a couple of times and it was always fun. You wanna share some examples? Oh, well, I have in previous ones, um, okay. like holding, I got the envelope and it had the picture oh, okay. in it. And then okay, yeah. um, another one that had a makeup, the makeup inside of the envelope. And Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. And you saw the dressing table. Yeah. Awesome. Seen and smelt and felt. and. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's the fun piece. And you can use the clear tangency in your magic and ritual because you can use it to connect with your ritual tools. Okay. So you, yeah. So you can read your different tools, hold your tools and, you know, see what information they may already hold, see what kind of energy they already possess um, and see, you know, what 
your ritual tools have to say to you. And as far as like building that energetic relationship with them. Um, and the cool thing about this is when you start to blend, not only can you receive the information, but then you can start to focus and direct energy into these ritual tools as well. So again, the same thing, you're going to you know, raise the energy, be aware of it using that clear sentient piece, but then using the clear tangency piece through the touch and be able to build a relationship through the energy of the tool by receiving and sending directing energy into it. And yeah. this is also how when you're blending these clairs and using this energy, that's how you're going to enchant or empower objects. And that's how would you, that's what you would do when you're like creating an amulet or a talisman, for example, you're going to, you know, put fuel this energy in. So the clear tangency ability and gift, while yes, you can feel yourself being touched anywhere, but as far as like working with and wanting to develop, it's in the hands. So there are energy centers and, and little uh, points in the palms of your hands. And so that's where you want to focus on when you're sending and receiving this information. So, and you can do it with your, your magical tools, your ritual tools. You can also do this with crystals and stones. Um, and okay, also, now, yeah, sorry. Um, now would this be something like, okay, for instance, when we walk into a metaphysical shop and we're looking to buy stones, we run our hands over it to see what we're drawn to see some pieces that it's like, Oh my gosh, I just got to have that. You know, could this be the way of that tool or that stone or that object to be calling out to you saying, I need you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of like your obsession with Moldavite. Yes. My obsession with Moldavite, which I'm wearing two pieces of as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, totally calling me out. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's a perfect example. So like, yeah, you walk into that shop and you find this, this tool or this object or, you know, witchy item that you fall in love with, that energy is calling to you. It's pulling you in, it's calling you in. And, but then once you grab it, you touch it, you hold it. It's like you build that energetic link. And yeah, exact same thing with the crystals and stones. Um, you can feel their energy and you can tell, you know, if they want to work with you. That's like when you're being drawn to and you're in, you know, that store and there's a big bowl of crystals, but or pushed one. away <laughs> or yes, or pushed away. If the stone doesn't want to work with you, it's like, mm -hmm. nope. Or no. an object in the store. Or it's like, Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> so is this where, you know, all of my pendulums run away from me, except for the one that I actually have clamped to my wall that <laughs> physically cannot go anywhere because, you know, it is so securely up there. Um, but all pendulums run away from me. I touch it, they run. And I, yes. I think didn't I didn't run that didn't one that I touch of yours run away? Yes, it did. You you used it and then it ran away, it disappeared, and it was gone. So did she touch was, mine? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> if anybody ever meets Wait a Courtney, minute. Do not let her touch your pendulums. Wait a minute. Did did, did you bring it to Massachusetts? Did you yeah. did you bring it to Did it run away? I don't know. I haven't looked for it in a while. <laughs> oh my gosh. That would be crazy. Oh my gosh. Now you have to let us know. Right? I was Wait. told it didn't want to be a pendulum, so I just left it alone. <laughs> like, oh, well, you can think about what you did. did. I did touch that one, didn't I? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And oh, I, gone. I remember gone. now because I was holding it and I was like, this one doesn't want to be a pendulum. It wants to work with you a different way. So might be safe just in the fact that it didn't want to be a pendulum to begin with. <laughs> right. She had and then the I touched it and it said, peace out anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right. My question is, where do they go? That is a great question. Oh, your fire fairy takes it. <gasps> There's the answer. Apparently your fire fairies don't want you playing with pendulums. And that fairy's no. been around for a very long time. She may have a mischievous, like a little on the evil side, elemental on her hands. Oh, yeah. 
You might have a little mischievous uh, house elf. So all the times that my kids said, not me, it really could have been not them. Um, <laughs> we could only hope, huh? <laughs> I really think that's probably legit. Parents can relate. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, thing, right? Like when you're magical and you're a magical parent, you know, you kind of got to leave room to, you know, like maybe it really wasn't them. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right. But you know that, you know, Emmy's just going to be like, Mom, I didn't do it. Okay. So, not to lie, Eden, Eden just the other day was like, I think the fairies did something. I can't remember what it was, but she's like, I think the fairies did it. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Okay, now you're, now you're definitely it. making room for that. There I'm just going to listen to this podcast and go, oh, loophole. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Because it's known there are fairies all around. I, I, you know, know. They're... I love them. I can't. We're friends. Okay. <laughs> See, but that's why my, unicorns. But that's why my friend said that you're not allowed at her house. She's going to oh, bring one of those right. fairies. Right. Yeah. So. My sister has a friend who does not like fairies and she has something going on at her house. And she was like, oh, well, you know, we'll come over and we'll help you, you get, get it cleared, cleared out. We'll take care of it. And she was like, no, your sister's not allowed over here. She has fairies around her. She doesn't yeah. like fairies. Well, at all. You know, not all fairies are good. Not all elementals are good. Not all fae. You know, it's like there, there are some of them that are not love and light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the same friend that said that she was just going to put, because uh, I told her when she was smudging her house to go through and sweep it at the same time to sweep all the negative energy out. She's like, I'm going to put a smudge stick on top of my Roomba. And that she was going to quit. She was going to clean her house that way. I'm like, you know, I'm not even upset over that. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's. I mean, the only thing that you could add to that is, you know, throw a cat on top of there and like you got everything covered. But you got to make sure if you do that, that you actually empty the room, but afterwards and don't like just let the stuff keep collecting. <laughs> Otherwise you didn't do anything. Right. Like I think that's the piece people forget. <laughs> <laughs> empty that mess and take out the trash. Don't leave it in your house. <laughs> Well, that's another reason why I said I wanted to get a broom tattooed on my legs so that, you know, I didn't have to carry a broom with me. I'd just be like, I'm sweeping as I'm walking. <laughs> I love that idea. At the same time. I do love that idea. That's a great idea. Little brooms for your shoes that just clip on. <gasps> love it, Rose. Yes. That is so cute. I love that idea. Yeah. All right. Done. We got to do that. That's awesome. And if you wear Crocs, you can get the little ones that stick in the holes. <laughs> even better. Even better. I love that. Emmy wears little Crocs all the time because she just, she loves them. And so, yes, I am digging that. Thank you. <laughs> People are going to be like, why is your kid running around with broom on her shoes? She's cleaning. <laughs> exactly. She's cleaning. Mind your business. Right. <laughs> All right, so clear sentience, working with uh, the energy to further develop this gift. Okay, um, so this one has everything to do with turning, tuning into the energy and frequency. So I wanted to give you guys some ideas on how to work closer with the clear sentient piece, which is the feeling, being able to feel that response to the energy. Um, just some ideas to get you guys started in case you're wondering, okay, where do I even begin? Because yeah, it sounds pretty cool to be able to feel all the energy you're raising and the different types of energy that you're working with. So what do I do? Okay. So here's what you do. I'm going to recommend that you start working with elemental magic because it really is a base point, right? It's a good starting point for any witch, um, you know, especially a baby witch out there. The elements is a great place to start. And even the seasoned witch, I feel like you can go back and do a review, like reacquaint yourself with the elements and really like recharge and regroup and, you know, rebond um, to help 
bring in those elements when you're doing your magic. So, okay. So discussing the elements, can we discuss the craft? The craft? Oh, sure. Okay. What about it? I mean, because they do the whole pulling in the elements. <laughs> oh, you meant the movie, The Craft. <laughs> I did. I love that movie. What? Which, they didn't I start fly. out watching that movie. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I really honestly have not seen it that many times, and it's been so long since I've seen it. I'm a terrible oh, witch. Um, I know. I prefer Practical Magic or Hocus Pocus. I, think, I do, too. I do. Yeah, yeah. I do too. That went a little dark, a little crazy, and they went a little extreme, in my opinion. Like oh, you know, yeah. all the 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 poor sea creatures washing up oh, on the shore. But they were her gifts because she was his daughter now. Yes. Yeah. She, that bee was crazy. That's what that is. <laughs> that should not happen. That is not okay. If that happens but, when you're doing elemental magic, you are doing it wrong. Please stop. <laughs> and if but, you think that's how it goes remember it was a movie right this is you. true <laughs> this, this is true I mean, come on <laughs> not really helpful. you know and that's the problem that's the problem with this whole thing is that people think that's what it's really like that you can kill thousands and thousands of sea creatures or you're gonna you know it's like okay just climb off that freaking movie magic seat high horse and come down to the real world and see what magic is really about. Oh yeah. Like the, the changing the eye colors or changing the hair colors. I mean, it, 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 it's not. No. You have to be on some really good freaking um, hallucinogenics. <laughs> right. <laughs> like they used to back in the old day, like, put it on their brooms and ride their brooms for a little while and go on some psychedelic trip that they used to do back in the olden days. Yes, but that's another <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yes, it is. And we will do that podcast because that, that that's going to be a fun episode. The flying ointment. <laughs> when but, I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that sounds like fun, kind of. <laughs> right, you guys stay tuned because that will be coming up soon. <laughs> I mean, you can't jump off the roof of your house. There, I mean, there are certain things <laughs> yeah. that you know physically right. you will Please not. Don't do yeah, don't don't do those. That's that's <laughs> you know <laughs> fantasy. I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut over here. <laughs> Have you jumped off your roof? <laughs> no, I'm just like thinking. Well, you know, really, if you're dumb enough to do that, have fun. <laughs> 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 yeah, Enjoy the fall. Like, <laughs> how tall was that house? I mean, I know I could jump off my roof and I'd live. I might break something, but there are other people they jump off their house and you know that that's it for them. They're toast. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what happened to me when I was I was twelve and I fell off a. I was walking across a an opening that was like two stories high. And I had walked across the pipe a few times and all of a sudden I just misstepped and fell off the pipe. Maybe one of my spirit guides was like, let's see if she can fly. <laughs> nope. No, <I> but not. <laughs> that makes me think of dad though. You remember when we were building the house and dad's like, you know, he puts this like tar paper over this hole to the basement. There's no stairs, but he's like always telling everybody, don't step on this area. Don't step in this area. It's a hole. Don't step in this area. Guess who fell through the hole and broke a rib? <laughs> I didn't know he broke a rib. He broke a rib. I mean, yeah. he was also the same one that was cleaning the gutter, you know, always say ladder safety, be safe and everything. He's the one that falls off the ladder and trying to avoid hitting and landing on the dog broke a rib. I think it was the same oh. rib. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> So apparently we have a family history that is not good with ladders because our dad's mother has fallen off of ladders a few times and broken things as well. So, Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my God. And then the dog, the same dog that he tried to avoid hitting by falling off the ladder fell off of granny's roof. Oh my gosh, you're the... right. She and, then when they got... the roof. and then when they got oh, him back final from destination. 
Right. So then when they got him back from the vet, he fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. He kept cheating death. <laughs> that death wanted him bad. Huh? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I forgot about all of that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, but yeah, okay. Grady, when she fell off the ladder, she's the one that crawled into the house and had to get dressed up and look nice so that somebody <laughs> could come take her to the emergency room. <laughs> I got to put my face on. I got to put my pearls and my face on. I gotta oh, she, look good change the... her... she changed her clothes <laughs> because she had been cleaning the gutters <laughs> so that she could go to the emergency room. Yes, Queen. That's awesome. <laughs> I've never heard these stories. This is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if anybody's wondering, yes, we come from a crazy freaking family that does very crazy shit. And we highly recommend staying away from roofs and ladders. And holes. And holes and, and floors with no stairs we'll that go to a basement. That you when we had that to hole to on the porch, that's why my husband has the plywood down because he knows I would be the one to fall through the hole. Oh, right. But when your porch burned from your fire fairy. Yes. He was proactive it's... to make sure you didn't fall through the hole left behind. Yep. I'm <laughs> totally accident prone. I fall out of perfectly good chairs at work, <laughs> surrounded by people. <laughs> okay. I really feel like more and more you really need that broom tattoo. <laughs> so maybe you don't fall and have some good luck. Maybe you'll start flying. Fall. Oh, Lord. But I feel like we do need to fill in a gap in the hole as far as the dog falling off the roof. Because I'm sure people are wondering, what's a dog doing on the roof? Because we just told everybody not to be on a roof or jump off a roof. Right. So our grandmother's house has a dead. <laughs> right. So our grandmother's house has a deck and attached to the other side of the deck is a carport. So he had, he had crawled up on the bench on the deck and then crawled up on the roof of the carport and walked off the other side. So it's not like we somehow maneuvered a dog on a roof. Well, he did it himself. <laughs> yeah. He told, yeah. we thought he was secure, safe, you know, there were Never legends. About Never he just didn't want to do it anymore. It's like, <laughs> like I didn't. I, they missed me on the ladder. They missed me through the hole, <laughs> or whatever it was. I'm just gonna go up here and maybe, just maybe, this will be it. All right, no, so I'm gonna do a movie. Okay, so we're gonna do a movie plug here. Um, if anyone's ever watched, uh, was it Dale and Tucker or Tucker and Dale versus Evil? And there goes. We have had a doozy of a day. <laughs> he was like, it's, they've got a suicide pack. Oh, Lord. That That's what it sounds like. like listening to all this. Dark, <laughs> you guys, that movie is dark but hilarious. Have you seen Igor? No. no. Oh, the animated movie Igor? No. no. It's great. He's an inventor. The Igor is an inventor, and he <laughs> creates this bunny that can never die. And his greatest uh -huh. wish is to die. So he's always killing himself. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds about right. Yeah. That reminds time. me of, I found the book Benicula. I loved that book as a kid. Which you one? Benicula. Huh? Benicula. It was the vampire bunny. <laughs> oh, I've never I heard of that like, either. That was like the book when I was a kid, along with Indian in the Cupboard. I saw the movie. Does that count? No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think it's your generation forward, like, doesn't read. I read. I read. You, you don't read. You listen to books on audio. Shut oh, up. Oh, you lucky witch. You're not supposed to tell my secrets. <laughs> it's cheating. I love I have shit to the do. big purple book of fairy tales when I was a child. It's oh. like all the fairy tales, but they have like a little bit of a, I don't want to say really dark twist to them, but they're kind of like real. They're a the little actual fairy tales, not quite not the, the grim, not the oh, not grim the part of it, but not like, you know, happily ever after it kind of like, you know, the story of the king that had the three daughters and 
he went to his daughters and asked them, how much do you love me? And the one's like, oh, I love you as much as all my dresses. And the other one's, I love you as all as much as all my jewels. And the third one's like, I love you as much as salt or meat needs salt. And he kicks her out, all, like, you know, just throws her out. And she marries this king and winds up like years later coming back to the kingdom. And it's like she goes in and tells the kitchen staff, no salt on the meat. And then it's like he's sitting there and he's like, oh, this is like the worst meal ever. Eh." And then it clicks in his head that he's sitting across the table from his daughter. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I love you so much. And (laughs) it's like, now I I get it. It was a very hard book to find. Ben got it for me um, not too long ago for one of my birthdays. He ordered it for me. I was like, oh, my God, you found it. (laughs) Oh, that's precious. Love it that. Is. Okay. Elemental magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what we were doing? That is what we were doing. <laughs> oh, yes. We started off on the craft. Nancy, I can fly. I can fly. <laughs> and then we went off the deep end with dogs trying to kill themselves. And <laughs> yes. yes. We got a, sorry, you guys. We got a little squirrely there. It happens. <laughs> we're witches. Thank you for going on my adventure. <laughs> Our adventure. <laughs> yes. I will swirl conversations in a heartbeat. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so very true. Okay. So tapping into you and feeling that elemental magic. All right. Dun, da, da, da. I would say start with, we'll start with earth energy, right? So obviously, what am I going to say? Get grounded, right? Don't eat dirt. <laughs> go play in the dirt. Go put your feet in the dirt. Go hug a tree. Go meditate under a tree. Um, and just try to really tap into that, that earth energy. But what I want you to do is really focus. Like really try to feel, you know, what that earth energy is trying to communicate with you. What is it? What is the, what are the qualities, right? What is what is the purpose of earth energy? Um, it is to stabilize. It is to ground. It is to give that firm foundation. Um, and all of that is important when you're working magic, especially if you're wanting to manifest because you'll want it in reality. <laughs> can, can, I ask an, can I ask a serious question? Yeah, of course. If I don't dust my house, does the dust count? As what? Oh, as grounding. Well, I mean, you know, that's people dust. It's not earth dust. I've got a dirt road. The dust is <laughs> dust is okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> She's trying to look for a loophole. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, you like know, you know I don't know. I am a germaphobe and you just called people dust and I am like all in the fields right now. It is people uh, dust. Try not to get sick. <laughs> it's like you know i don't dust it may be someone i know <laughs> oh my gosh i mean i know she has gravel and dirt everywhere so that makes me feel a little bit better like i get it no like, like but no, okay so you know we, like, you know we live in the south <laughs> right now. you have no, no idea you know, I'm, I'm being honest you know we live in the south when i pull my air vent out it is covered in red okay. clay it's right, the clay, the dirt. It's clay, yeah. It's dirt. Oh, I mean, I can't have a clothesline because there's. I live out in the country, and I got a gravel road, and there's just dust everywhere, and it gets all in the house. That is why we pull. That's why we pull the carpet out. <laughs> true. True. I just called it okay. people dust. <laughs> you did. Oh my God. It just you have no idea how much that that is so hardcore messing with me. <laughs> no, oh that I mean we pulled the carpet out of the house to try and control the dust in the house mm-hmm. because and it did help. It did help. It's it's helped yeah, a lot. I, I can I can contest to that. It did help, but <laughs> 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 Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> what did they say? Okay, okay you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and thank I you. No, thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> I said, and thank you. <laughs> said, you're welcome. And I said, and thank you. <laughs> and that was a pretty good laugh. <laughs> oh, <Lord. sighs> okay. So just try to tune in to that earth energy. And yes, what does it feel like to you? What does it mean to you? And just really tap in, tap in. Um, and then go through all the elements. So to work with water, try to, you know, really immerse yourself into the feelings and the energy and the qualities of water when you're taking a shower or in the bath or, you know, go, go get in the ocean, like put your feet in the ocean or in a river or something, um, moving body of water and just what does that feel like? What is it? What does it, what is the energy saying to you? Um, and then air energy, I'll get outside, get that fresh air, um, especially on a windy day, which we've had a lot of those, which I, I actually really enjoy windy days, not really hard windy days. Cause that was also here recently in my poor little garden gnome got knocked over and it was so sad because he's really big heavy cement garden gnome and he took a, a big tumble um are you sure it was the wind <laughs> right <laughs> we've already discussed this it was the yeah fairy. the door had to have been the thing that anyway i don't know i'm i just feel bad for my gnome and it's so precious because he's just a little bit emmy's two now so she's a little bit bigger than him but she always has to go and give him a kiss on each cheek every time she sees him. It's so precious. Is his name Gerald? Um, no. <laughs> Should it be? Should it be? Yes. <laughs> okay. Gray. Gerald, my husband. Oh, Bluey. I'm with you. Gray. Okay. Okay, also, if you haven't watched Bluey, go watch Bluey. It's total adult heaven. It is. Making if you have dope. kids and they need some cartoon occupation time, go ahead and, like, put Bluey on. It's an Australian cartoon, but it is so funny for adults. You will love it. I promise. Um, it's, it's totally watchable, and you don't want to pull your hair out. So... Air energy, tapping into it, feeling those winds of change coming and blowing through, which I feel like we definitely have had this week um, being in March. And I'm very thankful for it because I feel like we've all been through some pretty tough energy the last few months. Um, yeah, last few months have been a little hectic. And I think we're seeing that kind of across the board with a lot of people. So these the winds of change coming through is great. Um but yes, the, the air energy, and again, same with the fire, watching a bonfire, lighting your candles, watching the flames dance and move, and building that connection with fire energy and what it's all about, which is, you know, the passion, the creation, um, the action. Um, so, but really just begin to sit with and think about and get in tune. And it's just going to open that space so that when you take that into a ritual space, you're better, I guess, prepared to be open to receive and feel um, that clairsentient piece kick up if you will actually spend the time to sit with each element. So hopefully that helps and gives you a, a starting point to kind of connect to and call in and then you guys if, if anybody out there actually tries this and and then you know get some interesting or fun um results from you know playing with and trying to build a relationship with that those elementals i'd love to know we'd love to hear about it so you know send us a um a facebook message or uh send us uh email uh, the witch source at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. And I would love and to know if it, as a result, you feel the energy next time you do rituals. And if anyone happens to get in touch with the fire element, ask them what's up with me and, and why, why you have a fire fairy. I don't think it's the fire element. It's a fire elemental. 
Yeah. They're a bit, they're a bit different. They really are. It's they're, they're different. They're little beings that exist and they have their own personalities and their own purposes. And like, exactly. All right. we're talking so, about fire fairies, you know, like a, a fire elemental is mm -hmm. like the little fire salamanders that some people will see in the flames. I've actually mm -hmm. heard stories of people looking into a fire and seeing little salamanders crawling through the fire. And then they get shown a vision or a scene or something in the flames. So it's not necessarily the element, it's an elemental. All right. If anyone gets in touch with the elementals, ask them what's up. And are they done? You are a witch. Do it yourself. Right? There's a spell for that. Yes. Witch, well, get witchy. Get your witchy. I'm just on. saying we've already had enough going on around here. Do I really want to tap in anymore? Okay, you know what? You can go outside in a safe space, go sit in a circle, not preferably of salt, but just make yourself a space of a okay. dirt circle. Put yourself in a dirt circle and then you talk to <laughs> the fire. No, now you see what I believe that you have going on here is that you have a familiar mm. familiars or you could call it shoot i was looking it up the other day because um an imp per se oh. they are mischievous now they are mischievous they are tricksters but they want to work with you they're like a witch's familiar but unfortunately, they get chased away and they get hurt because they don't get understood because their witch is forcing them away. Their witch, you know, if you get if you get a relationship with this thing, this is a familiar and an imp, uh, whatever you want to call it. They're in the same classification as a familiar, just not a pet. This right. is a spiritual familiar, something that you could actually send to gather information for you, that they will come back and give it to you. Um, they'll work with you. They'll help you with your magic. They'll help you get what you want. But they are tricksters, and they will act up. And so, act out if you're ignoring them? Yes. You say you wanted a new porch. It wasn't happening for you. So it's little freaking creative fucking mischievous ass was like, watch this. <laughs> oh. They're like, there we go. oh, you want a new van? You want a new ride? Oh, let's get real creative and have some fun with the whole family this time. Yeah, that was fun. My daughter feels my daughter feels guilty about that. And she was just the one sitting in the car, minding her own business, turning a key. <laughs> but really, that's what I think you have is is a little a little familiar, a true familiar, not a pet familiar. Like you know, people get pets and they're like, oh, they're my familiar. Unfortunately, in my book, that's not a familiar. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a, you know, so it's like when a pet dies and, you know, you have that connection with it. I completely understand it. But a true familiar is something you can work with, something you can send away, something you can put on errands and stuff like that. So I think that's really what you got is you got yourself a little imp slash familiar that's mischievous and a little trickster and you, you can either chase really it away personality there. <laughs> you know, you can either chase it away and fight it or you can start giving it attention and really start having something powerful awesome. that you can work with. Yeah. Oh, it's still going to be a little asshole. It's still going to be a trickster. <laughs> you know, that's something don't ever take away from it because that's their, you know, their way of life. But they want to make you happy. There you go. Okay, I'm thinking now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> me and my yeah. little, how are you going to listen to me, darn it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. That was a big uh, bonus. Hello. Love it. <laughs> So, yeah, I love that. So, yeah, spend the time and make it. And see, we find things out like this. And other people, by going through and practicing and working with trying to feel and get in touch with the, the elements, then they could also get in touch with the elementals and then maybe find out if they have familiar. So, I, I love that. Thank you so much. And I was going to say, it does tie into what we are talking about because she could feel it out. She could, you know, oh, start trying to use those 
players to find out what's going on. Right. Whoa. Well, this kind of ties into the dream I had the other night. Remember oh. I, the dream I told you about? Yes. So, share? Yeah. So, I had this dream, and I don't remember much about the dream other than the fact that, for, and I can't remember who was in, who all was there or whatever. But, um, so I was, um, we were doing like an exorcism or something. And in the middle of this exorcism, I feel something slam into my back. But oh. it's so forceful slamming into my back that it wakes me up. And I'm like, when I wake up, I am, you know, you know, when you get hit in the back, you're like, Ugh, winded. All right. I was winded. I felt it. I like, I still felt the whole vibration in my entire body of this thing slamming into my back. Like it was entering me. Right. Oh, like it was trying to jump you maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I woke up and. I mean, I got up early the next morning. It was like five o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, okay, I am up. And I was killing it. I, you know, getting shit done. I mean, I was, I was on top of shit. Oh, that sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't, I'm, cause I, I messaged Whitney and I'm like, what the hell came into me last night? Because I am just like, you know, I don't remember much about the dream, but I know like something entered and I'm like feeling it. So when I went and looked around after I got your message, um, from what I could tell, you had uh, exercised a piece of yourself from someone, something or some situation and that had returned to you. Because you were, you looked full, you looked whole, you looked fully on power, fully magical, um, and I mean, whole, like restored. Um, so I think you got you back. What I, that's what I saw when, when I went and looked. Um, like I mean, you I said, felt you know, different too. Right. You felt whole. Complete. I you did. had all of your power. You had all of your energy back. You need to learn how to do that so you can tell other people how to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> what was the exorcism? What did it look like? <laughs> you know how you have a dream and you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to remember that because you know, I mean, it's the middle of the night. And you know, I mean, you just had this dream. But, you know, you and you're like, okay, I'm going to go back to sleep, but I'm going to remember this dream. I didn't remember it. I hate when that's and see, that is why we, we recommend keeping that dream journal by your bed to write it down, which actually Rooster has started doing and he comes up with some crazy things when he goes back and reads it the next morning. <laughs> see, I never, I, okay, I know everybody dreams, everybody dreams. But I never remember my dreams. All right. Well, I wish you could have remembered bits and pieces of that one because it probably would have been very interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah. A nice little to know, you know, what had a hold of you would have been. I mean, and I'll maybe do some, do some dream magic and dream recall and see if you can't figure it out what it was right that could be you know something do some spell work for it if you're if you want to know i mean you know at this point you have it back but you know Maybe it'll be reoccurring oh. <laughs> yeah yeah all right, so we talked about clear sentience and how to start to open it up and bring in um, and have that exchange of energy. So let's go over some things you can do to start to strengthen your clear tangency and uh, abilities to um, use for psychometry and magic. So again, the doesn't involve tangerines. 
<laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> tangency. <you know? laughs> Let's uh, bring some citrus into it. <laughs> Brighten up your day. <laughs> yeah, it's not a idea. Remember your vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it works through the hands. And again, there's our energy centers through the hands. So if you want to open up and start to work with the energy centers in your hand, you'll take your index finger and you will draw a spiral from the center of your palm out in a clockwise direction. Ooh, I just started going clockwise before you even said it. <laughs> oh, I went counterclockwise. <laughs> I wanna go out of it, not into it. <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> so yeah, you start at the center, moving clockwise, going out. And that starts to activate that energy center there. And then you can envision and feel that, you know, use your other psychic gifts such as clairvoyance to see, sense, feel all of the energy kind of opening up there and, and feeling, seeing, envisioning a light there opening. But doing the spiral, drawing the spiral there um, will open it up. And then you can do the other hand as well. Oh, I just did that. Yes, do both hands. <laughs> I'll let you know you want now, to get it on. <laughs> so talking about hands, let's talk about hands for a second. We Everybody has a two receptor. Set for two of them. <laughs> yes. Well, hopefully. hopefully. Um, but everybody does have <laughs> a receptive and projective side of their body. So depending on whichever hand that you write with or eat with is considered your projective hand. So then the other one would be your receptive hand. Now, I've also heard that like, if you want to know which one is your, you could also look at it as your dominant hand, your wrist or your whatever, your receptive. Yeah. Hand. Your dominant hand, yeah. your dominant hand would be your projective hand. Yeah. So then, and then your non-dominant one is like, how do you cross your fingers and which one of your thumbs is, is on top and whichever one is on top, that's your dominant. So with me, it would be my left. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Even though I'm right-handed, I cross my hands and it's my left thumb that's on top of my right. So that says that my left hand, see, I'm backwards. <laughs> Maybe I should have went counterclockwise. <laughs> Maybe that's quite interesting. No, mine is my right thumb lands on top, but I am right handed and I know this about myself. <laughs> I am right handed, so, but so when I do that, that's interesting, Rose, because I, I have seen when I do um, energy readings on people, I have seen people have their own energy crossed up inside of them, and uh -huh. it can come out with some funky results as far as magic because your energy is crossed within you. So, and, and sometimes people need help getting their energy uncrossed so that their magic and their energy flows a little bit better. Help me with me. Help me. <laughs> we can make, work on that. Make yes, my right nice. thumb sit on top of my left. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> now that we know, we can go look and see. It might be there because that's the whole thing, right? Like until we go, until I go look and see. I don't know. It might be that's just the way you are and that's perfectly fine. Or there might be something cross that needs to be kind of straightened out in there. And oh, then... I'm uniquely me. I'm just that way. <laughs> <laughs> Do everything backwards. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how the eye, you know, everyone has a dominant eye. I guess I, I, I wonder... into it. Yeah, be because something. like I'm, I'm right hand dominant but I'm left eye dominant. So um, it makes it fun when shooting because, you know, if I'm shooting the rifle, I shoot left handed, but you know, shooting a handgun, it doesn't really matter because oh, I do that way. too. When I shoot oh, a gun, right. even though I'm right handed, I have to have it with my left eye. Yeah. So Tristan was interesting because all of my kids are left eye dominant and right handed. 
So when Tristan would do it, um, he would actually cross over and shoot right-handed, but look down the sweep. I mean, he would he would contort his body to look down the barrel <laughs> with his left eye. And he just, he just naturally did that. But, you know, it, it kind of makes you wonder how, you know, because they say each body part, you know, contributes something magically, how having a dominant eye would work. I don't know what, I, I don't know how, if, how, if, or what having a dominant eye would play into anything magically, um, because, you know, magically speaking, you're going with your third eye. So, um, you know, when you're That's talking in about the middle. Cl clairvoyance, right, it's in the middle. So I'm not sure that if that would play an effect on anything or not. Um, it might be interesting to look at it energetically and see. Um We'd have to yeah. ask an eye reader. Probably. I don't know one. Never I don't know one either. And I didn't know they existed until I was told by somebody that they had an eye reading then. And I was like, what's that? They were like, they read the, they read the color of your eye and stuff like that. And they can see your future and your past and they can do fortune telling through it. It's like, oh, that's neat. That's and, cool. You know, I think that's interesting because my daughter has a fascination with seeing what color eyes I have each day because my eyes change color uh, depending on my mood or what I'm wearing. So, you know, it's almost like a daily thing for her to come up and see, you know, like, you know, I, you know like, you what know, mood is mom in mom. today? Right. Mom. We should totally make sure we cover that when we do our when we covered some divination things that, that we need to put that in there for That's sure. Cool. Go over that. Okay, so your left side, your receptive side, typically for me anyway, your non-dominant side is your receptive side, and for a lot of people, it's your left side. It's also considered your feminine side because it is receptive, and you can also call your receptive hand your moon hand. <laughs> so then your projective side, your dominant hand side would be your masculine side. And you could also refer to this magically as your sun hand. Um, so just <laughs> wanted to throw that out there. You have a moon hand and a sun hand. <laughs> you have a, right, so. a girl hand and a boy hand. <laughs> right. And which, well, hand, do you, and which no. hand do you know best? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so psychometry. Again, psychometry is going to be a little bit of a blend. You're going to want to put, if you're wanting to do some psychometry, you're wanting to receive information, understand information, gain information from objects or people, um, you're going to want to put those objects in your receptive hand. So once you put the object in your receptive hand, then your other clear senses are also going to start to kick in to um, help you know, sense, feel, understand. So you'll have, you might get the, the visions um, with your clairvoyant. You might get uh, the knowing with the claircognizant. You might get, audio, you know, you might hear things with the uh, clairaudient um, or any of the senses really, like any of the other clear senses could kick up to give you the information through that receptive hand. So you can try, um, again, holding different objects to see what kind of information that you might get from them. You can hold uh, crystals. And this is a great way to work with your crystals to get to know the energy of your crystals and how they want to work with you and what they do. So a fun little thing you could do is have a bag, maybe some small tumbled stones and you know work with them initially to try to get to know the crystals and get you to see energy but then once you're um, familiar with these crystals put them in a bag put your hand in and just grab a crystal and then take a guess at what crystal it is by reading and receiving using that clear tangency or i mean using psychometry to know what crystal it is and then see if you're right so that's you an know, exercise you can do you are a, a wonderful crystal whisperer. <laughs> if only we all could have that gift. <laughs> well, and oh, well, well you know what? I actually do that with my cats. 
Yes, so, I was going to say you can do this with people and pets as well. Yes. So I'll be laying there at night and I'll have three of them around me and they're all vying for my attention. And it's like, okay, well, this one's this one and this one's that one and that's that one over there. You can fuck off. I don't like you very much. <laughs> and there's this one and then all oh, that one over there. And so, yeah, I kind of like, and it's so I do it with my, my pets. Unfortunately, I can't do it with my rocks. I'm not a I'm not a stone whisperer yet. <laughs> but the more you practice, you could be, and th you have the gift, obviously, because you're doing it with your cat. So that was the other thing I was going to say. You can try this with your pets, and you can try it with other people. So if you're wanting to be the person to try um, receiving information, you're going to use your receptive hand and hold their projective hand, and then see what they send you. They can try sending you thoughts or messages through that connection um, or just see what comes up, you know, do a, do a read. That's how some people use psychometry to read other people is they just see what comes up when they make that connection. So um, a few other things I wanted to talk about and mention. Oh, and plants. You can do this with plants as well. Oh, mm -hmm. and trees and things like that, you know, so and. You know, I think that's a fun little idea. <laughs> and trees have so much history. So, you know, you can really feel probably a lot of what's on, you know, that tree's experienced in its life if you were to try it with a tree. Um, some other things to practice psychometry on would be things like um, antiques um, because they would hold, you want something that's old would have a lot of history, a lot of energy in it so that there's enough information there for you to try to start picking up on. Um, I would be very careful um, with the objects you decide to pick. For example, if you want to pick um, some old historic war items, you might not like the information you get. Uh, right. Okay. So I'm not I was going to say, another thing you can do is you go out to eat in a restaurant, you sit down in the booth or at the table, you can try and feel the person that was there before you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. So jewelry is a good one as well, especially old jewelry, something that somebody wore a lot. You're probably going to get some information off of um, old buildings. You can put your hand on the wall, um, cars, old cars, um, anything like that, and just practice and, and see what happens, um, you know, what information you get. But again, really try to think about what it is that you're going to try this on and do you really want that information? Um, and so then just some good witchy psychic housekeeping I want to mention. Please, please, please be careful of the items that you pick up and bring home that are old or used. Um, and if you are a antiquer, junker, uh, you know, thrift store shopper, I highly recommend clean, cleaning, cleaning, clearing, cleansing things before you bring them in your home. Because if you are clear sentient or really if any of your clairs are turned on, you can unknowingly bring stuff into your home that is going to affect you, affect your energy, shift your mood, um, and you may not understand why. And so that would be why. So um, especially if you're, you know, again, a thrift store shopper, there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure energetically that you are clearing items as well as, you know, <laughs> them and bringing them in. psychically wash them, <laughs> magically energetically <laughs> wash them before right. you bring them in. Um, but yeah, you can practice on, you know, a lot of things like this, you know, clothes carry uh, energy, quilts, carry energy. Again, you know, war items, historical items, things like that are going to carry a lot of history. So you can definitely try money. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, again, what, you know, who knows what you're going to get? <laughs> <laughs> who knows what butt crack that bill was in? <laughs> yep. Yep. There you go. She went there. I wasn't going to say it, but I was gonna say, Ooh, was that right. stripper had a good night that night. <laughs> I'm actually just now thinking Ooh, that was a sweaty titty. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually thinking of all the stuff. I, I am an antiquer. And mm -hmm. so, and my husband is really into, you know, antique tools. So, you know, we, 
you know, men and their yeah. tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of energy there. Yeah, we went through dating a lot of his tools and, you know, some are you know, over 100 years old. So you should it, try. It, try so you can have some fun with country. those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see what comes through for sure. All right, you guys. Well, that is our episode. That was all I had. Unless you guys have anything to add, I think that about wraps it up for me. I hope you guys have fun playing, playing around with some psychometry. And um, if you're in the group, we'd love to hear what you think about the episode and what you guys got um, from trying out some of these exercises, what your experiences were. We'd love to hear. Um, it is us in there. We interact. We talk. We want to know what's going on. Yeah, tell so, us what you think. <laughs> so please, please, please uh, follow us, like, share on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe on YouTube. On YouTube, we have the podcast episodes there as well as along with um, spell videos. You can catch us live doing card pulls, witchy talks, and all kinds of things um, on Facebook, YouTube, and the Facebook group, The Witch Source Society. That's where we're talking about that. Come in, share, talk. Um, we love to interact with you there. Also, be sure to check out the website, thewitchsource.com. We're constantly adding new witchy products, um, witchy wares, and uh, magical supplies. So all that's available there. And if you are enjoying this podcast, please leave us a positive review because it help, really helps us, helps other people find us. And please share, 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 share as much as you can um, all of our little <coughs> social media outlets and the podcast and the YouTube and everything. We do appreciate it. And if anybody is interested in uh, readings, we have those on our website as well. And we love doing readings. Yes, we do. <clears throat> and join us Friday nights on the Facebook group. Those yep. are always fun. <laughs> uh, Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time. We go now, live with Witchy. Now we're women and we're witches, so we're a always a little late. So expect us around <laughs> nine fifteen. But don't tell Whitney because you know if she still thinks it's nine o'clock, we'll be all right. <laughs> yes, I am magically reworking my uh, relationship with time. So. Oh, I'm just as bad as you are, though. That's why I say we're women. You know, so <laughs> as long as you know you keep it with you know nine o'clock schedule, we'll both kind of you know just be a little late. <laughs> just bear with us. If we move it to 9.15, you won't see us till 9.30. <laughs> right, exactly. So it's 9. We just keep. We just say 9. nine. We'll be there at some point. <laughs> be patient. <laughs> Patience is a virtue, even magically so. So right. <laughs> All right. Anybody else got anything to add? Or are we? Love your light. Love your shadow. Yes. All right, you guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Bye.